Hey guys, so I'm the CPL Fever. It's your host, Jack and Angie Murray here. And today we are joined by Wander's fullback, Mateo Shepo. So Mateo, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I want to interview you for a while. So how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, actually, just uh, got back from training. So, you know, uh, just hanging out now. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited as well <clears throat> to be on your show and to, you know, have a good, uh, good chat with you guys. Yeah, we're honored to have you. And I was so excited last season when the when I saw that the Wanderers signed you, and I was very and I loved watching you play at the Island Games. You're super thank you. fun to I watch. Thank you. Thank up you. Thank you. Bombing up and yeah, down was... that that flank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It was uh, it was good. It was a good season for us. I was happy to to contribute to to the team. Uh, you know, to, to be able to make it all the way to the, to the finals, uh, despite a disappointing season before that. So. I think we got a good group of guys in and, uh, you know, we were able to execute, which was, which was amazing. Yeah. You guys definitely did great all the way to the finals, which was amazing. And you guys were super close to winning that game. Yeah, that was, um, that was unfortunate that we weren't able to come away with the championship, but, you know, credit to Forge and you could tell that they've been together for a couple of years and they were up to the task and, uh, you know, it's just about us kind of, looking at the game and looking at our performance and, and seeing how we can improve and, you know, continue kind of that momentum onto, onto the season, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so my, one of my first questions for you is, how did you fall in love with soccer? Um, actually, it was uh, my parents, uh, when I was very young, they, they needed you know, I think I had a lot of energy and they were just like, we need to channel this into something productive. So they got me into, you know, a soccer team when I was about maybe four or five years old. And then from there, I just fell in love with it. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much, it's been my entire identity now growing up through the years. So um, I'm very grateful for it and for everything that it's given me. And was that in Colombia that you started? No, no. I started playing soccer in Canada. Uh, we, let's see, we arrived to, to Canada in 2001. And I probably started playing in 2003, 2004. So I was like six or seven, actually. Okay. Because Colombia was uh, big into, into soccer, like the, the culture, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a second religion over there. Um, you know, it's it's everywhere. It's uh, it's part of the uh, you know the identity of, of being Colombian, South American in, in general. So, yeah, definitely um, had family ties and cultural ties to the game, uh, and that was that was a big part of it as well. That's good. They didn't put you in hockey instead, right? <laughs> Hockey's a bit expensive. Uh, you know, I was I actually did like hockey growing up. I thought it was very yeah. exciting, but um, yeah, it is a bit expensive to kind of get get into. Where it's you know the good thing about about soccer and why it's so beautiful is all you need is like you know a couple of rocks and a ball, and you have a, a game. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I played both hockey and soccer growing up, but personally, I enjoyed soccer more. So I like started to just play soccer and focus on soccer because I liked it better. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's amazing I think both games can teach you a lot uh mm -hmm. about you know about sports about life uh, any any sport really uh, and that's that's the beautiful part of, of of being an athlete in general and of being in that type of environment right so you know credit to hockey as well and and um to to, to all those athletes uh, out there that yeah. So, um, so did you shine at, at soccer right away? Was it something that you just excelled at? Like you were one of the best players in your age group right away or how did that progress? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think I was actually quite terrible when I first started <laughs> playing soccer. Uh, I, I wasn't very, very good, but uh, I was always willing to, to put in the work to, you know, dedicate myself to, to be concentrated and focused in the trainings and then, you know, pick, picked up a couple of things and then started progressing through the ranks. And it was, it was kind of like this evolution. It was this process that, that happened throughout the years. And, and, uh, you know, I'm happy that it did. It landed me here. Right. Yeah. So uh, when did you, when did you get to the point where 
you were starting to realize you, you were good. Um, you got invited to, to TFC2. How did that come about? Can you, can you talk about that part of your, of your career? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think when things really started to click in terms of making that next jump, I was about 13 or 14 years old. And um, I got invited to the provincial team, the Ontario provincial team. And that's, and I, you know, I got invited to the trials and I made it and ended up captaining the team. So that's when I started realizing, okay, like there's a future for me here. Like I really have to uh, separate myself and kind of be a, a different 13 or 14 year old than most 13 or 14 year olds. Um, and through that, I, you know, I started playing for the national team at the youth levels. Um, I was able to make it into that and uh, that's when things kind of really started to click and then I played for three or three years with the TFC Academy and then when they started up the USL team uh, it was after we had won league one with that team which was probably one of the best teams I've ever played on like if I if I named you the roster you guys would be surprised who was on my team for that league one team um and that's kind of how it got started. I didn't play too many games with TFC too, but um, it was definitely a, a very fun experience. I really let, enjoyed uh, being part of the TFC uh, Academy and and their, their structure in general. Yeah, what do you think was the biggest takeaway um, like after that experience? Like what do you think was the biggest takeaway from your experience in the TFC Academy as well as being in T at TFC too? Um, I think the biggest takeaway I had a lot of mentors at TFC too, a lot of coaches that um, they would use the game to teach us, you know, life lessons in general, uh, the, you know, the, the power of being consistent, the power of knowing how to manage your emotions and, and knowing how to deal with failure uh, and uh, knowing how to deal with success in general. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the focus and the emphasis on being humble, but, but confident, uh, you know, th those things, I don't think there's one definitive thing. I think there's just this, this whole package of, of things that I could, that I've, that I've used kind of throughout the years um, that my mentors at TFC taught me, which I'm forever grateful for, you know. Yeah, I bet that um, they were great coaches. And yeah, they do sound like great mentors. I play for an academy here in Nova Scotia. And my coach also like um, shows us like life lessons in soccer. So I thought that, mm -hmm. that was pretty cool that you said that uh, you had the same thing at TFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely uh, one of the biggest takeaways um, that the game teaches you in general. And yeah, I'm so grateful that I had these guys alongside my, my teammates that kind of reinforce those, those lessons. Um, they really took me under their wing and it was, it was just a great experience. And, you know, I'll forever be grateful for it. And um, at 14, when you made the, uh, the national team or the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the provincial team um, and you captained that, and then uh, moving on to TFC too, were you still, were you playing at fullback at that point? No, no, my whole life I actually played as a center back. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. I was, center back. I was a center back my whole life. My first season playing fullback was when, when I moved to Germany because okay. uh, even in the national team, I was playing fullback, uh, center back, sorry. Um, but unfortunately, in the modern game, you don't really make it as a center back if you're not, you know, six two six three. 6'3". So uh, my coaches in Germany were like, we're going to put you out uh, as a fullback to see how you perform there. And, uh, you know, the and I'm still trying to hone my craft on the new things, right? But I think my experience as a center back gives me a different perspective um, at that fullback position. Um, that's why I, I love, you know, I think I have pretty strong defensive qualities and that's kind of stems from, from being a center back my whole life. That was my only job as a center back. So, you know. Yeah, um, something that I know when I was watching in the Island Games, I noticed that you were like very, that you were like very good at like in the attack, but also you get back really quickly and always put in like a strong tackle and you were like very good like in that defensive shape. So it's cool that yeah, you were yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, um, like I said, it kind of gives me a different perspective. And I always kind of have that in the back of my mind of, uh, having to fulfill my defensive responsibilities 
it's kind of just ingrained um, from being a center back my whole life. So it's something that I try to use to my advantage. But uh, yeah, I think I have to develop my my attacking game a little more, and that's something that you know I'm working on this season. So you know, there's always things things to improve on and things to learn. Well, that's interesting. I'm I'm actually surprised by that because you look so good going forward. Um, to learn that that you had played as a center back for for most of your career, um, so I would have actually I would have actually thought the the opposite that you were more of like a winger or someone that 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 had been converted to uh, to a fullback. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, but then on on the other hand, you know, you did lead the league in in tackles in in the island games. And you didn't even play every game, so I mean, you, you know, that's that's quite uh, quite uh, uh, an accomplishment, I would think. Um, how proud of you were to were you to um, uh, you know take that honor as uh, as the the best tackler? Um, you know, that's something that I definitely told my friends about, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because you know, especially my friends that I grew up playing with, because they they know that even when I was a center back, I like to put in tackles. I like to mm. kind of um, do the dirty work, this and that. Um, so that's definitely something that I shared with them, and they're like, "Of course, of course, you did. Like that's that's your game." Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, listen, I love to put in a tackle. I love to regain possession from my team. And if I don't, then scare the, the opposition a little bit, you know. I always try to keep it clean when I can. But it's part of the game, right? That's that's going to go over really well at the Wanderers fans, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, Wander, yeah the Wanderers fans are going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I'm, you know, all the boys here were just... We're hoping the uh, the situation kind of um, gets better, and we're able to travel, and we're able to get fans at the at the grounds. It's something that we're really looking forward to. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can see some some strong tackles at the Wanderers grounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure nice. we will. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay, go ahead. I was just wondering, is there someone that you like to model your game style on, your game style on, or like you try and emulate when you play? So I, my favorite player growing up, and I think it'll kind of all make sense now that I told you uh, that I was a center back, um, was Carlos Puyol. Yeah, that's what favorite. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, he's my favorite. I, I loved his leadership qualities. I loved the way he defended. I loved his just his give for the team. Um, so that's somebody that I kind of tried to emulate growing up. Um, now that I'm in a fullback position, I, I try to um extract inspiration from different fullbacks i really like quadrado on on juventus he's a very defensive yeah. and dynamic um full, full well i guess wing back because they play a back three um and he he always fulfills his defensive responsibilities which is always cool to see uh right now i'm looking at sergio sergio dest he's he's been amazing for barcelona and i think he's younger than me so you know uh you can draw inspiration from from anywhere, um, but yeah, attack uh, fullbacks like this, you know. Yes, and you mentioned Carlos Puyo and Serge and Des. So, are you a Barcelona fan or like a? a yeah, yeah. My whole life, yeah. I've been a Barcelona fan. Yeah. So yeah, okay. exactly. There you go. Yeah. So you love um, like the tiki taka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, I like combin. I think that's one of my maybe one of my strong points as well. I'm not really like. I'm going to do one that much, but I'm, you know, I'm looking for the pass. I'm looking for the give and go, the one two, to get into free spaces. Um, and that's the way that Barca plays, you know, apart from Messi, which can also obviously take on whoever he wants and the whole team, if he, if he wants to, but that's definitely some uh, team that I look, that I look and uh, try to emulate. All right. So let's unpack some leadership here. Um, you know, at age 14, you're picked for the, for the provincials. You said you captained that team, right? Yeah. 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 I was a okay. Captain. So you captained that team. You also uh, captained your team in Santa Barbara. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Santa Barbara, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me about this leadership. I mean, people obviously see you as a leader. Um, Stephen Hart signed you to a multi-year deal, I, I read, which um, I, I don't think is, is all that common for, for this league quite yet. So 
leadership. Um, tell me about that. What, you know, what do people see in you? How, do, how are you a leader on the field? And, um, you know, how did you develop that? Um, I think that I, I never was the most talented on my team or I never was like the fastest or the, the most, you know, I never had like this defining quality. So, um, but I always knew how to organize people. I always knew how to, how to kind of get the best from my teammates and how to maybe deal with my teammates in different ways where I could maybe get the best game out of them. Um, and that's something that I try to do, you know, even now with the Wanderers, um, I'm, I'm all about organization and, and being in the right positions and this and that. And then apart from that, I think I just have a good work ethic and I try to, um, you know, lead with my actions instead of my words. Uh, I try to put in the extra reps, the this and that. So I think maybe that's what the coaches, you'd have to ask the coaches what they see, but um, I think that that's something that's, uh, you know, that kind of defines me. It's something that I kind of live by as well. It's something that I try to, to do. It's not easy to do it every day, but, you know, uh, it's about knowing how to push through the hard moments. Yeah. So you have a real discipline and, and persistence that, that you kind of, is a core value. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. That's kind of at the core of, of maybe that, you know, those leadership capabilities. Okay. So um, how did Germany come about? How did you get on the radar of, of, of the club in Germany? And tell me about that because obviously they, they must have seen you as a center back and then they, they converted you to a fullback. Um, what did they see in you and, and why did they want to take someone that was a different position and, and, and uh, help them migrate to a fullback? Yeah. Uh, so to answer your first question, I guess, how did Germany come about? I was, yes. I was at the, I was at a tournament in Austria with the national team when I was, I think I was 18 at the time. No, I was 17. And there were some scouts there and they, you know, I, I think I had a couple of good games and uh, they wanted to bring me in on trial. So I, I ended up staying in Austria after the camp and then going on a month trial in Germany and flew back home, waited for the decision, this and that. And then three days before I graduated high school, they said, yeah, like we want to have you for the U19 Bundesliga team uh, come over as soon as you can. So I actually didn't even get to attend my high school graduation. I just flew like, <laughs> The next day I flew out yeah. for preseason and then from the jump, from the moment I got there, they're like, you're going to be like our fullback. We saw, you know, good offensive uh, qualities on your, during your trials. And uh, we think we could really like develop you in this, in this uh, position. And I said, yeah, let's do it. As long as I'm on the pitch, I don't care where I play. So uh, that's kind of how it came about. And um, it was a great, great experience in Germany playing, you know, U19 Bundesliga week in week out you're playing against like Bayern Munich, Hoffenheim, Mainz, um, all these big clubs that you hear of in the Bundesliga right so uh, it was definitely a learning curve but uh, we, we did well we, we stayed in the league and uh, we were a smaller smaller team within the league so it was uh, our, our mission was just to, to stay in the league and um, we, we fulfilled that goal so it was a great experience. How long were you there for? I was there for a year. Okay. Yeah. After that, I decided to go to university because I, you know, I always had the, the my other identity, I guess, is the academic side. I always, you know, like school and everything. So I wanted to kind of do both at the same time. What was the biggest adjustment uh, with, with Germany? Because uh, you, you, I'm assuming you didn't know the language, um, you know, there's mm -hmm. new food, new culture. You're playing in the in the Bundesliga under 19 division. I mean, it must be a very uh, it must be a very intense league to just jump into. Yeah, it was. It was. I think the biggest adjustment was uh, recognizing how quickly you can get punished if you're not careful. Um, you know, I think sometimes in in uh, in North America, growing up and playing in the the youth leagues. You can make a mistake here or there and it'll be okay. But there you make a mistake. It's, you know, you're getting scored on. The, the, the coach's job is on the line at the U19 level. It's not comfortable for him as well. So you're trying to get results for, for your coach. Um, so it was a very, you know, 
I went to Germany as a as a as a boy and I kind of came out as a kind of kind of like a man, you know, a little bit. Um, it was a very sobering experience, but it was good. The the pressure it was high, the intensity was high, and it was what I needed. I think it gave me that extra confidence and and uh, that extra belief in myself as a player in general. Yeah, so there must have, so like you said, there was a lot of pressure to perform because you didn't want, like, you because your coach's job was on the line and, like, since you were a smaller team, uh, you didn't want to get kicked out of the league. So, the, and you were always competing against, like, these great teams like Bayern Munich, Hoffenheim, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to ask you, how does the style, how is, how is the style of play different um, in Germany than here? Um, like in the Wanders or even in Santa Barbara? Well, it was a very big transition to going to university and playing there. Uh, there's a lot of good athletes in the college game, very athletic guys. I went and played in California, which they have more of a, a footballing culture, more tiki-taka uh, type of, of style. But because the rules of the game are different, it it completely changes it. So you're allowed unlimited subs, for example. So it's the game doesn't doesn't take this natural rhythm that you kind of see and when you're when you're watching a professional game. It's just somebody's tired. Okay, get them up. Twenty minutes, boom. You know, next guy, this and that. And so it's it's always high intensity, high pressure. Um, you you know your average. If you played ninety minutes you're not running less than probably 13 kilometers or something like that. You know, uh, it's a lot of running. It's not that much tactical awareness. Uh, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a, definitely a transition that I had to make. Um, and then, you know, coming and playing in the CPL, it was kind of more of that feel of the natural rhythm you can get a pass and look up and play your next you're not always just on the go this and that it's a lot more tactical tactical because of the because of the level and the quality of the players that play in the league um guys that can punish you as well so uh you know playing the cpl was a lot more similar to like you know you not you bundesliga for sure and what was it like at, at uh like at at santa barbara uh, because you're going there and you know now we're talking about your other passion which is which is becoming a doctor how long has that been your goal I think that's been in the back of my head since high school really I I think uh I was always interested in health and the body in general being an athlete I was always looking at ways to maximize my performance maximize my recovery and then I wanted to get down to the a deeper underlying sense of like the bodily functions and how how um it's composed and you know the different aspects of medicine from that respect um so i saw it as a great way to kind of mix you know both sport and and uh medicine so i ended up studying biology at ucsb it was very challenging it was it it was very difficult major but very rewarding as well um and that's kind of how I got into it I also had a a, our team doctor on the national team um had won the NHL before he played for the he played for Calgary like back in the days you know he loved it and uh this and that so he kind of piqued my interest in medicine as well okay that's interesting Mm -hmm. and you said you looked at like different aspects of medicine so was it like, did you just look at a medicine or did you look at as well as like natural medicine um, and stuff like that? Yeah, no, definitely. Especially now um, with more research being done on Eastern medicine and different, less conventional styles of medicine. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely interest, interested in that aspect of it. Um, and uh, I personally know a lot of guys that through injuries have taken non-conventional styles of of recovery and it's 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 worked brilliantly for them so I'm pretty open-minded about it and um and yeah I mean I I implement some some practices as well some mindfulness practices uh in my daily routine uh and it's done wonders for me personally 
Uh, so like meditation, like stuff like that. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like to do a little meditation too, like trying to connect to like spirit guides and like crystals. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the mind body connection is very, uh, is very powerful. And it's something that you need to get in tune in as an athlete, especially because, um, you know, the game happens in, in, in moments, instances, it can change in, in the split second. And it's, it's being able to manage those moments and those transient emotions that really can elevate your, your game to the next level and keep you consistent throughout throughout the season, throughout your career. So if you can implement those mindfulness practices and kind of get in tune with yourself and with your, your mind, um, you'll be able to have more control in those situations, I think. Yeah, how long have you been meditating for? I started, you know what? I started, I've, I've done it on and off. I did it on and off in college and I loved it. And then I started, you know, kind of intensively doing it every day at the Island Games actually um that's kind of when I started uh, going back to the to the hotel you know doing it before games this and that and I saw how well it worked for me so it's kind of something that I kept kept going kept doing throughout yeah and I read also that you did um cold showers as well so are you are, are you kind of like one of these um like for lack of a better word like biohackers while you're you, you maybe like try a, a diet and see how that affects your body and then maybe change things up and and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always open to to new ideas. Um, the cold showers is actually something that I got out of David Goggins' book, "Can't Hurt Me." Uh, okay. He was he was a Navy SEAL that uh, has a very crazy story, and he was just talking about how how useful cold showers are in general, how much they wake you up, how much you know they they how much good they could do for your body so I started doing that before games and uh you know I think it helped I liked it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable before I got into an uncomfortable situation which was a game so I was already kind of in that warrior type of mentality which was good how cold are we talking here oh just just whatever the the shower you know the coldest I could put in my shower wow okay Um, you know try to do 20 to 30 breaths under there and then then come out feeling like a like I said, like a, like a warrior, I guess, you know? Yeah. I think, I think in, in, uh, in an interview or something, an article, um, you mentioned something about, um, it, it kind of caused endorphins or something. Is that, is that one of the reasons that, that, uh, was mentioned in the book? Yeah. 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 I think, um, it, it releases a lot of endorphins, um, and kind of gets you in that alert state um which is something that you want to you know it's a state that you want to be into before going into a game so um it was you know and I have friends that actually do it every morning I don't do it every morning I just do it before the games but they do it before every morning and they uh they love it they said it's like drinking two cups of coffee but without (laughs) (laughs) being in your system yeah yeah cool cool Mm -hmm. yeah I'm sure I had like makes you like awake if you do it like in the morning and makes you like awake right away and wakes you up and gets you ready for the day yeah i actually had a buddy of mine in, in university that would jump into the ocean every morning at six in the morning before before class and i was like what the heck is this guy doing but i understand a little bit i could see his point of view a little bit more now so what kind of doctor do you do you have uh do you have a certain kind in your mind or you're not sure yet um, I mean, I've only really been exposed to orthopedic doctors. I worked for one in university. He was an orthopedic surgeon and I saw the work that he did, uh, which was very, very cool. Uh, also orthopedic doctors work with athletes all the time through injuries. Mm. Uh, so that would be pretty cool, but I think it would be pretty unfair of me to say that I wanted to be that because I haven't really been exposed to other aspects and other facets of medicine yet. So I, you know, uh, I'm st- going to keep my mind open and, and see how that plays out in medical school. Um, but yeah, I'm not really too sure. We'll see. Okay. That's <laughs> fair. Keeping, it, yeah. keeping my options open. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have an open mind, especially when you haven't like experienced everything yet. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking as well. 
Um, yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you a couple, I wanted to delve in a bit more about like um, the island games and the wanders. Um, so how did the wanders reach out to you last season or did you like reach out to them? Um, I, I had a, an agent, I have an agent, uh, it's the same agent, uh, who throughout, you know, in the middle of my season in university told me, you know, the Wanderers are kind of reached out and they're interested and they're going to kind of follow you. And I said, yeah, okay, great. Sounds good. Um, that's interesting. Um, and then we ended up making it to the tournament and we did pretty well at the tournament. We went all the way to the elite eight of the national championships and, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks after that that coach Stephen Hart called me in and asked me if I wanted to be a part of the Wonders organization and and uh, if I wanted to play to play ball up here and that's kind of that's kind of how it happened it was just kind of out of nowhere yeah well that's exciting yeah yeah well, it was amazing yeah what did you think when your agent called you and said hey Mateo got some uh, got some news for you yeah, it was, it was great. It was great news. Um, when he first called me, I was like, okay, like that's, that's, uh, like I said, very exciting. Like I have to make sure that I play well in these next couple of games that I, you know, that I show my qualities. And so I always had that in the back of my mind, uh, while I was playing. Um, and thankfully, you know, we were able to do well and I was able to do well individually in those, in those matches and, um, uh, it worked out perfectly, you know, now I'm here and, and I'm in Halifax. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for the challenges that, that we have ahead. Yeah, uh, we just went to make um, the making the rounds with Stephen Hart and Derek Martin. And I and he said that he likes to like watch full games, not just highlight um, highlight reels. And I'm sure like he was watching. He, he, he himself was like watching your entire like game. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure. I mean, you know, highlight reels are, are great to highlight obviously your best attributes and your best moments in certain games but to really analyze a player you have to see them for full matches and maybe a series of full matches um, I think the biggest thing with being a professional footballer or with recruiting professional footballers in general is is the mindset there you know is he coachable he or she coachable mm -hmm. um, and that's why you kind of have to analyze them in moments of stress and moments where, you know, maybe their team got scored on and they're down one. No, what's their reaction? Are they, you know, are helping their team or are they shutting down? Is the pressure too much? This or that. That's why it's important to analyze full games. Yeah. Stephen Hart mentioned that too. And going to the highlight reel and the full games. Yeah. The highlight reel like will um, show off your like best attributes. So they know like what your strengths are, but like a full game like shows, um, a coach or scout how how you perform in a full game and like you said like what happens if they're losing how do they if they support their team or if they shut down exactly no exactly that's uh you know you can't measure the intangibles from a from a highlight reel and the intangibles are very important in this sport and probably in any sport that you play so that's uh that's why it's important for sure so speaking of intangibles, um, there's a word grinta that uh, that Stephen Hart <laughs> Stephen Hart uh, apparently you know kind of uh, encouraged you or or uh, you know told you about during the island games. Can you tell me about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he told us the story that the Italians have a word for for grit and hard work and determination, and that was grinta. Uh, and so he wrote it. He wrote it on a big uh, whiteboard and that was kind of like our our mantra i guess you know as a team regardless if things are going good bad or whatever we're always going to have kids that we're always going to go fight our battles and then not shy away from them so uh, and it was something that a lot of the boys resonated with um i think a lot of the boys on this team have that that mentality of of uh, being uh the underdogs of, of being maybe a little bit overlooked and uh, we thrived in that environment. We were the dark horses in the Island games. and We loved to be in that position. You know, I think we all did. We all enjoyed that, that position a lot. I don't think may maybe this year we won't be in that same position because we're not a secret anymore. <laughs> you guys were too good. 
Yeah, we're not a secret yeah. anymore. So teams are, you know, I don't think they're going to take it for granted yeah. or take us for granted when they're playing against us. But um, it's, I think it's still going to be part of our core identity and of our core values. So, yeah. Yeah, I bet Grinta will stick with the rest of the squad and you. And yeah, it's true. They probably won't like overlook you guys anymore. They'll probably like be preparing how, like extra, how do we beat the Wanderers? And yeah, you guys mm -hmm. were the dark horses. And it was fun to watch. It was fun to cheer for you guys as like the dark horses and then see you progress through each round and keep, and keep going to the finals. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun for us as well. Uh, I think we had to kind of pinch ourselves sometimes. Um, but, you know, I think we all had full confidence in our teams and our capabilities from the jump. So we were all, uh, you know, um, happy, but not, not impressed. We were there for, you know, we knew that we were there for a reason and we weren't just trying to enjoy the ride, you know, so uh, it yeah. was good. It was a great experience. Where did you spend the off season? I went to California. I went back to California. Okay. Yeah, just so I could train there. I have my girlfriend's out there right now, so uh, I went to go visit her and just to get away from the from the weather, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get yeah. into some warmer weather. Yeah, but, it is really cool, like here in Nova Scotia. But it it is great when uh the when all the snow comes down. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, half of it I was in California. The other half I was uh I was in Toronto with my family. So I was studying for the MCAT the whole time. So it was uh I was locked in in my room for eight hours a day. <laughs> yeah, the the uh um wait. So how, sorry, how did you pronounce it? Um, the MCAT. Yeah, MCAT. Yeah, I bet uh, I read that you ha um like did it for eight hours a day. That must have been like a lot of work. Yeah, I treated it as a full time job. It was um. Yeah, every day, six days a week, I would I would study for eight nine hours a day, and I wow. took it just bef just before preseason actually. So, I took it, and then the next day we started preseason. So it it like the timing worked out perfectly actually, but uh, yeah, it was definitely one of the most challenging things that I've had to do, <laughs> um, from an academic and mental perspective as well. So yeah. when's the new season starting? You guys know as much as we do, <laughs> I swear, right? We have no idea. We're just trying to stay as sharp as possible. Yeah. We're fortunate here in Halifax that we're able to train. At least I know some of the teams in Ontario and other provinces can't even train. So that must be very frustrating. I have some, some friends on the other, other teams and they're, they're quite frustrated with that, but we don't know. I think it's, I think it's difficult for the league to put out anything in general mm -hmm. because of things change from the hour to hour, day to day, uh, and coordinated and coordinating with every province is probably impossible almost. So we're going to have to see, uh, I'm not too sure. Well, look at your situation. You've, you've basically been in, been in uh, a situation where you uh, left Germany to, um, you know, to kind of progress the schooling as well as soccer. Mm -hmm. um, and then you come into the CPL year one is the Island games year two is this um, that can't be easy for, for someone that's, that's planning their career. No, it's not. It's not. And I feel very, I, I'm very fortunate that I had this opportunity out of university uh, and uh, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm employed and I'm doing what I love in general. A lot of people are, are dealing with, especially I know some of my friends at a university where, you know, you're coming out and you're looking for jobs, you're looking for your place of employment, you're looking to start your life. And during these times, it's, it's next to impossible. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of adjusting. It's a lot of being headstrong, I guess, and, and kind of building a community, a support community around you so that we're able to get through the finish line and, and we're able to, to get back to some sort of normal, right? But yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's not easy for you guys. Uh, are you going to, schools are open here, right? Like you can go physically to school and everything. It's it's just like, you guys aren't doing school online, are you? Um, um, I think we can go to school. I'm homeschooled. So I really don't know a lot about that. I'm homeschooled. Oh, got so, you. Um, I, yeah, I know my friends are going to school, so I, I'm pretty sure that they're like that, that uh, COVID okay. restrictions have opened up. 
but yeah, yeah. I'm from school, so I'm not great on that area of expertise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. That's awesome, though. That's great. I yeah, have a I sister back home who she's had to, she went to school and then she had to go online and then she went back to school and then they said, nope, back online. So wow, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's a lot yeah. of change. Uh, it's a lot of moving pieces, but you know, we just have to stay positive. Yeah. Uh, just to get like through like tough times like this, like just be positive, be optimistic and have hope that like exactly. this will all go away soon. Exactly. Exactly. That's how we're all thinking. Yeah. So how's the uh, how's the new team shaping up? What what are your thoughts? Because you you've been able to practice with them, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's been it's been very very positive. I mean, after after having a five month off season, I think we all came in and we were just like, okay, like let's see how this is gonna go. It's <laughs> probably not gonna be too great the first couple of weeks, but um, we brought some very very good good quality into the team and some guys that have a very good uh, head on their shoulders. So, um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're getting used to each other. We're getting used to playing with each other. Um, we have a good core of, of the team back from last year, which has been great because last year we, we were like starting from scratch. Yeah. Uh, so this year it's a little bit more uh, familiar, but it's been good. It's been very enjoyable uh and uh, it's been there's been some good quality so far so we're excited to kind of take that into the into the season whatever it, it's going to look like yeah um, um i was just gonna say yeah um i heard that you guys were gelling um great last year like as we built as we built up to the island games and it's great that you guys are like gelling again and um it should be like a really good squad because i have been seeing like a lot of good players coming in and like a lot of returnees that are like were core um, parts of the squad. So I'm excited to see you guys in action again this year. Yeah, we're excited to, to be back and to showcase ourselves and to make the city and, and its people proud. Uh, yeah. we, we take that very seriously. Yeah, um, hopefully you'll be able to play at the Waters Grounds this year. Yeah, I know. Us too. Everybody, everybody's looking forward to that. Hopefully we can get some fans in there and uh, we could all enjoy together. Hopefully some victories. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of back to training, uh, I, we were just interviewing Peter Shala again, which we will release like soon. Um, but uh, he had mentioned that um, sometimes you guys do like three on three. It's like uh, do three on three. So how has that been? Like a three on three tournament. And it's really oh, funny. Oh, yeah. The f oh, the five, the five aside tournaments. You mean. Yeah, sorry. Five aside tournaments. The five aside tournaments. <laughs> five aside tournaments is carnage <laughs> it, it is uh so we're not getting competition anywhere else apart from training so guys are you know we're taking those days very very seriously uh you often find guys that, that they're frustrated they're angry because they, their team didn't perform well or they didn't perform well and it's uh they're gutted and they have to go home and kind of take it on the chin and come back the next day uh but it's fun at the same time. I think uh, we do our best to, to, to keep it respectable and in good spirits. Um, but it's always fun to, to be on that, you know, on that winning team and kind of uh, have bragging rights for, for the, next, uh, the next week or so. Um, and sometimes when you, you're not on that team, you just have to take it and like, okay, yeah, yeah, you guys won, good, good for you. Like, yeah. whatever, you know, but it's been good. It's been good. Coaches have done a good job at keeping things competitive. Yeah. And uh, I saw that Masood was signed to a player contract, um, April Fools. But does he ever does he ever play with you guys? Masood is a top class player. He yeah he jumps in to to training sometimes, and uh, this guy plays like um, like an experienced uh, six. Like you know you're you're uh, you know he. He's he's all over the pitch. He's spraying balls. He's uh, you know he's he gets the job done, and it's a it's, it's a pleasure to play with him. <laughs> hey, you actually recorded your skill zone with with him, right? Uh, was that done on the island games when you recorded with the skill zone? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was was that a cool experience to to record the the skill zone? Like, was that done at the island games? 
yeah 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 they just called us up one day like we need you to go and show up at the field and do this and that and it was cool yeah it was really fun and hopefully you know some of the kids watching can take some of the drills and and, and practice and, and learn a, a couple a couple of things um but yeah that was definitely cool i think i think the cpl does very good at like media coverage in general uh so it's great to see how they kind of put everything together and uh, make it make it make it exciting for the viewers yeah i, I love watching those skills ones and i have done like some of them um, myself and I love and I love when it comes on and the first time that it came on I was like oh my gosh it's so cool it's so cool and it's super cool when you when yours came on as well I'm just excited yeah, to see yeah, what it was. yeah yeah it was good it was some good drills uh from from uh, different players on there uh, and it was it was fun to do and it's fun to see to see on tv how it kind of plays out and sometimes you wish you did something different or something but you know <laughs> um, some of them are a little bit complicated i think it's best to keep it simple but um but they're definitely cool and you can take a lot of uh, a lot of little tips from them for sure what yeah, is definitely. uh yeah what is one thing that that uh if if a player wants to go pro um like you like you've gone uh what's one thing that they should they should be focusing on one thing i think I think that the the way you go pro is just being consistent. I think you, from a young age, I think you have to recognize the type of player that you are, and you work on your your strengths, and uh, you you set yourself aside uh, by, you know, being maybe the best one v one attacker or the best one v one defender. You need something that's going to give you an edge. Uh, maybe you're the fastest guy on the field, or maybe you're you win every single aerial battle or I think you need like one attribute that a coach is like, okay, I could use that, you know? Um, and then apart from that, I think you just have to be very mentally strong and, and stay with it and, and work through the tough moments in the game because there are a lot of tough moments in the game in general. Um, so you do have to be very, uh, and you have to, you have to love to work on the hard days, right? That's the day that, you know, you show up on the pitch, you're not feeling great, you feel tired, you feel lethargic. That's the day where the voice in your head has to be like, okay, this day I need extra focus. This day I need extra effort. Um, because, you know, there's going to be a game where you're warming up and you're like, I feel like I'm at 60% right now. The only thing that's going to push you through that finish line and help you perform well is your mindset. So I think that's that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, mindset is very important. Like you said, consistency, because your mindset, um, uh, like 80% of the game is like played in your mind while 20% is played um, like- in With the your feet. Yeah, with your yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And coach tells us that all the time. Says like, the game is played up here. The things that you have, uh, you know, everything else is just tools, but mm -hmm. you know, you can't build a house without having the blueprints, right? Yeah, I th I, feel, I think Arsene uh, like Wagner said something um, similar like that, like just what you just said right now, uh, in an interview. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm not nearly as wise as him, but <laughs> I'm not made a similar comparison. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that's that's like one of the the things that I tell anybody that kind of asks me that question. Yeah. And uh, when did you start working on, let's say, a weakness of yours, like like working on your weak foot or something? Was there a certain time in your in your career when you said, OK, this is my practice and now I'm going to go specifically work on my weak foot, you know, outside of practice? Yeah, my I mean, my dad was actually always on me about like having a good weak foot. He said, you have to be both footed. You have to be able to do things with both feet. So. He would take me out to the to the pitch every you know whenever he could and we would just we would do an hour of me just passing the ball with my left foot or hitting long balls with my left foot or you know this and that uh, that was kind of ingrained in me from young and then I also played when I played center back I played left center back so I always had to you know a lot of times I had to put the ball on my left foot and and distribute from there so um, it kind of lended itself to to improving that aspect of, of my game in general. Yeah, um, being two-footed is like, 
um, incredibly important because for me, I'm like, I'm like good on the ball. So I like, I can get out of tight spaces, but I know I wouldn't be that. I couldn't do that like as well if I didn't, didn't work on my week book. Cause when I was like four and five, like my daddy would like, um, daddy would, um, like train me to use my, like my left foot, my weak foot. So now I'm like pretty good with both yeah. feet. Mm-hmm. And I find that it's like an, a really good advantage because now like now recently some of the other kids have started using their like weak foot like Mm -hmm. in my age group um so me having used my weak foot um from an earlier age it has helped me and yeah no no it'll keep helping you it'll keep helping Mm -hmm. you definitely being able to to have both both profiles is is very important in the modern game in general Uh, uh you know unless you're like well, not even Messi. Messi uses left right foot all the time. He scores all kinds of <laughs> right. So, um, you know. Yeah, my my dad says, um, like Dai says that h- half of your chances will come on your strong foot, and half of your chances will come on your weak foot. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you have to be prepared for both. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. Well, that well, that was like fortuitous for you that that you got put in in the left center back position because probably you were playing with, you know, two right-footed center backs and, and you were stronger on the left. So that made you, that being uh, chosen to play the left made you even better on your left because then you have game experience on, on that, um, you know, at that, at that level. Exactly, exactly. And that's why I think I felt somewhat comfortable playing left back. Like Wait, in, so did in you... Games in general. Yeah, so did you play um, in... in um, at Santa Barbara, what what position did you play? Fullback or center back or both? I played oof, I played, you know what? The majority of my time at UCSB, I played in the sixth position. Oh really? Okay. A, yeah. Oh, I played so like six. a CDM? Yeah, yeah. I, like a CDM. But uh You didn't even mention that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been Mr. Versatile. The, I'm the utility <laughs> man. Um uh, yeah, I, I played as a as a six, um, but I I did play a decent amount as a right back and a decent amount as a left back. It was just wherever the coach needed us. Uh, we had one guy, his name's Noah Billingsley. He's actually playing for Minnesota United in the MLS right now. Mm-hmm. He was a right back, and he was like, he was incredible. He I you know hats off. He's one of my best friends. He was incredible in college, and the right position was locked. Like that was his position. He was arguably the best right back in the league in in college soccer for a number of years so I yeah but coach always wanted me to play um at least my senior year uh so I was wherever they needed a job to be done I'd play you know CDM or I'd play left back or right back because sometimes you'd go away with the national team so they needed a right back so I was kind of rotating everywhere in college which which was great it was great experience I got to see the game from different types of different angles and I'll tell you what, I think the sixth position is the hardest position in the game. I'll, I'll be honest. It is tough. Just yeah. because Very of because of um, decision making? Yeah, your decision making. Like, like when to press and, and when to And you're always you're always receiving the ball with your back to goal or most right. of the time. Right. And you're doing you're doing it in areas where you can't make a mistake. Right. So you know. If you if you turn into pressure, it's a goal for the other team. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's very detail oriented, and you have to be able to ball. You have to be able to spread, you know, s- spray passes left and right, and be the link up man. You have to be able to be the guy that double teams on defense, the guy that joins in the attack. Yeah, it's it's very it's a very difficult position, but I'm glad that I got to play it and kind of analyzing him from that from that vantage point yeah I think it's very important like that you can like play in different positions so you know what the other position needs when you're in like so I'm a winger um but sometimes I'll play like center mid or CDM so I find it useful if I'm like a center mid I know what the winger wants because I primarily play on like either well I actually play on either wing but I play mostly on the left um Mm -hmm. uh so yeah um but yeah it's great to know um like what the other position needs because it can really help like a team in like a tight situation mm-hmm. uh 
but going back to the CDM point, sometimes when I play CDM, yeah, it is fast because like you have to make the decision on either like to press, like press the ball, um, like fall back. And like, you have to also be like very, uh, you have to be very aware where your defenders are, but also where the other team's attackers are. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It gives you a different, like I said, a different perspective of the game and you kind of know what the other position needs and what your teammates may need from you. So it was definitely a great learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I, I don't think we have a bunch more questions for you. So if you want, we could get into the rapid fire daddy, but I just have one more question. If you do not have a question. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, uh, on your Instagram, I actually saw like your, your workout. Um, and I just wanted to say, you must be so strong to like be able to hold yourself up while having like, I don't know how much, how, uh, how heavy the weight was, but a weight on your chest and still be able to hold yourself up. Um, oh, on the, <laughs> on yeah. the, my Instagram post, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's not that bad. I'm sure you 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 could you could probably do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm st I'm still working on like the strength part of my game, like trying to like um like I'm trying to like be like sturdier in possession and like mm -hmm. learn how to use my body better, like to keep possession and to try and get possession. Yeah, and that's not. But what we've started been doing at my soccer academy is like three minute planks, like three minute planks for three times. Um, mm -hmm. so that's definitely been a little challenging, but it feels really good when you complete something that's hard. <laughs> definitely. Oh, and that's how it starts out. You know, uh, we started doing strength training when I was probably around your age. And then, you know, you build gradually year after year after year, and then you'll be surprised. You'll be squatting 400 pounds and benching 300. So, <laughs> um, just keep at it, man. You'll, you know, you'll get there. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah and um so that was my last question so do you want to go into rapid fire yeah yeah we can do it okay um so do you play fifa no okay um favorite player on the canadian national team um i'm gonna go with um mark anthony k mark anthony k okay good choice uh do you dance yes okay that's cool <laughs> uh, do you do like a specific type of dance or like just like dance in general i like to dance to anything yeah <laughs> i i personally ballroom dance so i was just that's wondering cool. i did that a little bit too when i was younger oh that's cool yeah mm -hmm. like so like my like the latin dances are my favorite like the jive and the cha-cha and that stuff mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah i'm colombian so you know it's kind of my mom was teaching me how to dance in the kitchen when I was like five. <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. part of, you know, part of the culture. Yeah, I bet. Um, and uh, what's your favorite word? <laughs> My favorite word. Truth. Okay, I like that. Um, hidden talent. <sighs> hidden talents. Oh, I don't know. That's a hard one uh can we get back to that one sure uh uh um is there another team that you support because i was gonna ask um who do you support but then i realized that you love barcelona you said earlier in in the interview so do you support any other teams like spain or because you like carlos puyo or um i'm a big toronto fc supporter oh, i want to true. try to watch all their games yeah yeah is it, do you have a fair player on tfc Favorite player on TFC? I think uh, I have a couple of favorite players on TFC. I think uh, Osorio is amazing and he's been fantastic for us. Um, and then I also like Richie Larea. So happy for him. I went to high school with him. Oh, yeah. I know, you know, I know a little bit of what he's went through. Um, not a ton, but, you know, we go way back. Um, and he, I'm so happy that he's doing so well. And he has so much quality. Yeah, he's been performing great at the national level and at the club level. So L Richie Larea is one of my favorite players to watch on TFC just because he's so fast and he can get up and down, up and down. Um, mm -hmm. 
and yeah story is just so solid and like that center mid role like he's yeah perfect he's been awesome mm-hmm. he's been amazing my favorite player um for tfc is like pozuelo like i love like the yeah center he's attacking amazing mid. Mm-hmm. yeah i really like him as well but no i'm I'm happy i'm happy for for the team uh, i was sad to see greg go mm-hmm. but um happy for him as well because i know he went to he went to ucla actually and played for the galaxy i believe so i know he's home which is good and um i like that the the young boys are getting a chance yeah right now yeah with, I... the, with the toronto fc team and it's kind of yeah. it's kind of weird to see uh, Michael Bradley, you know, because you're used to him for the last few years to be like, you know, drop deep between the defenders, and now he's like, <laughs> he's you know, free range. That free guy range. is a winner. So it's a, that yeah. guy is a winner. He's a winner. Yeah. He's the backbone of the team. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just so weird yeah. to see him like, you know, getting up there now. <laughs> yeah, he does. I just I, I'm having trouble adjusting still. <laughs> yeah, like he's he isn't like always by the defense. He's like like more like a general center mid and he's like wherever he wants now right well, 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 Ralph, well, Ralph gives him that defensive stability mm-hmm. I know he's so young he's 18 he has a lot to learn but uh you know he kind of gives him that I want to see um my one of my best friends from the academy actually is is Liam Fraser so mm. I want to see him get a little bit more opportunities because I think he's a really good passer of the ball and he has a lot to offer but I'm sure his time will come yeah, yeah. he is yeah he's a yeah. really good passer and not and yeah yeah he is a really good player and i'm glad that like chris armas um is like letting um like the young boys play more and i'm excited to see like more young boys like play more like um him uh jacob schaffelberg is another one that like i also really like because he's from nova scotia and he actually played at my club Val united so a couple so sometimes he he'll come back like to my club to like practices so he signed mm-hmm. my shoe once, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very dynamic player. I, he mm-hmm. has a lot of high ceiling. He has a lot of potential. And it's excited to see him get more minutes now under the new yeah. manager. Yeah. Um, yeah. And where is your happy place? My happy place. Where is my happy place? Hmm. Honestly, anywhere where my family is. Yeah, I like that um, answer. I could be anywhere, but as long as they're there and I can spend time with them, it's you know, it's a good time. <laughs> that only makes everything better. Um, and do you have a nickname? Do I have a nickname? Um, in high school, people used to call me Teo, like T-E-O, Teo. Mm-hmm. So people call me Mati. Okay. Um, that's, yeah, just just those two, really. Okay. My mom calls me hard-headed sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what is one superpower you'd like to have? One superpower I'd like to have? Um, probably, I forget what it's called, but it, the people that are able to jump from like place to place, like teleport. There oh, yeah, teleportation. Okay. Like jumping I into I would love sp- to teleport. Yeah. Like, boom. I'd be in a beach in Fiji right now if I could a little bit. <laughs> Just for the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could be anywhere you want and whenever you wanted. And you could basically teleport everywhere. It's so cool. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and do you cook? Yes, I do cook. I love to cook. Yeah, it's, it's really fun cooking. So what's your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook, I think I make a pretty good curry, actually. Oh, mm. yeah, curry is so yeah. good. <laughs> I make a pretty good curry. Um, I would say that's, like, my one my one go-to dish if I had to, like, cook for friends or something like that. That sounds nice. good. Yeah. Uh, and what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? I think my favorite movie, I have a couple, but... If I had to choose one, probably the Shawshank Redemption. Mm, okay. okay. That's I don't interesting. Think I know that one. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Have you watched it? I watched it, um, and, and I read the book first, but yeah, it's uh, it's, it's, it's it's that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good movie. Yeah. And uh, what's your favorite board game? 
my favorite board game. Um, hmm, that's a good one too. I'm not too sure. I probably just Monopoly. I'm just gonna give you a pretty uh. So these ABC. rapid fires ones are are pretty difficult. <laughs> ABC ABC answer to that one. Oh wait, have you guys ever played Catan? Yes, yes, Catan's Catan. really okay, fun. I'll, I'll go with Catan then. Okay. I yeah. love Catan. Yeah, the most yeah. popular answers usually are either Catan or Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even yeah, yeah, I thought I was being all like philosophical with it, but. I guess it's pretty ABC as well. But yeah, Catan is pretty fun. I like it. Yeah, Catan is so fun. Uh, we, um, yeah, our, we play with like friends a lot and it's so fun to like build and um, just like... like Beat your parents yeah. is what you're trying to say. It's fun to win. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. It's pretty frustrating when you don't, but when you yeah. win, it's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when Jack's playing and he's winning, he's he's giggling like that. He's, yeah, exactly. he really enjoys it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, board games are board games are like just so much fun. Um, yeah, one of my favorites is uh, is what's it called? What's it's called? Uh, Small World, where you're like a fantasy, where you're a fantasy creature, and you have to like try and like take over these areas. Um, mm -hmm. and for each area, you get you occupy at the end of its turn um you get coins and once and you, whoever has the most coins at the end of 10 turns wins and each race has gotcha. their own like special powers um mm -hmm. so like there are elves in it i love elves they're like mm -hmm. so mystical and magical um what is your favorite book my favorite boy that is a good one too my favorite book, there's so many. There's so many that are good. I really like, I'll give you a few. Okay. I like The Alchemist. Okay. I like, um, I like The Alchemist. The, the Mindful Athlete. I think every athlete should read that book. Um, and then I really like, uh, I think it's called Complications by Atul Gawande. It's a, it's a book about uh, this I think he's a general surgeon and like when things kind of go bad in the operating room um it's not gory like that but it's just like how they deal with it and uh you know it's just part of I guess my medical uh intrigue yeah yeah and uh is there a quote that you live by or really like um I really like um, never be so afraid to fail that you like don't even try. Yeah, I like that one too. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is your most used emoji? My most used emoji? Probably the laughing face. Okay. <laughs> that's, a good, um, that's a happy one. Yeah, that's yeah. a happy one. And... Uh, uh, just wondering, do you have your hidden talents? You know what? I was gonna, I was thinking about it, and I was gonna say I'm a good cook. Okay. So nice. we kind of answered it already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Oh, was in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, and what are three words to define you? Three words that define me, I think, would be hardworking, um, consistent and humble i like those yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i think that um from this like hour and a bit that we've been talking to you like i see those and you've mentioned like them like inconsistence as well and like mm -hmm. humble i you've also mentioned as well as hard working um and then what are your goals for the, for the future my goals for the future I think my goal, my ultimate goal for the future is to always keep learning no matter how successful I am or how hard things are, just to never stay stagnant or in one place, not like geographically, but mentally, yeah, just that's to always, a, keep, always keep evolving. Yeah, that's a good goal, mm -hmm. a really good goal. <laughs> yeah.
And that was my last rapid fire question for you. So I want to say thank you again for coming on. I love talking with you. I really enjoyed talking about soccer as well as the mindset part of this conversation. Uh, so yeah, so thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you guys for having me. It was an absolute joy. Hopefully we can see you guys soon at the stands and mm -hmm. just keep going. I love what you guys are doing. Uh, the guys on, you know, the teams love it too. So, uh, you know, keep working at it. It's been great. And it's great to hear other people's perspectives. So you guys are doing a great job. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Take care, guys. Yeah, yes. thanks. Take care, Mateo. See you. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. Hopefully.